Welcome to my video. We're going to be turning an L2 Gleaner Combine and a Loftness 9 foot snowblower into a self propelled snowblower. So I removed all the components from this combine that were related to the actual threshing operation and I was able to actually recoup about $900 worth of parts for um, items that I sold from the combine. So I took it apart carefully. Uh, there I moved the tail and all the tin work. Essentially I stripped it down to what you would call like a power unit, just strictly the engine and the drivetrain. And the Gleaner Combine has four main posts that go down to the frame under the engine assembly and I cut those and lowered the engine 36 inches there you can see I set it down that worked quite well so we cleaned up the frame and just reattached it at a lower point and I also lowered the cab 14 inches so it would be easier to get in and out of my uh, heated shop. So six months later, or one actually one season in the shop, I managed to get the blower physically mounted and uh, everything all put back together so the combine could actually move and drive under its own power. But I haven't, haven't gotten to any of the um, logistics of actually making the blower function. So that'll come on the second season, winter number two. So here's a few photos, um, second year, which would have to be winter of 20, 21, 22. Figured out the uh, drive drivetrain and how I'm going to operate everything, put some gauge wheels on it, got the hydraulics all working, the view from the cab which is great, there's a short video where I kind of do a walk around to let you look at that. So I'll walk around and give you a little bit of an overview of what we have here. Go we'll back up. So this started out as a early to mid 80s L2 Gleaner combine which is made by the Ellis, Ellis Chalmers company. And uh, I've turned it into a self-propelled snowblower. We'll kind of I'll do a walk around and kind of explain a little bit so on the combine, you notice here we have a drive belt. So on the right hand side of this combine, we have an electric clutch that operates the separator system. And so I utilize that, which does have a variable speed and a double B belt down to here, two gearbox, and this gearbox actually propels the fan only. This was the gearbox that was in the snow blower and I removed it, rotated it 90 degrees and it's a one-to-one -one ratio so when I engage the right hand side which used to be the separator for the combine it now engages the fan of the snow blower. The uh, snowblower is a loftness, nine foot width blower. It originally had skid plates on. Um, I decided to put gauge wheels. I have adjustment here. Uh, two rows of holes, space one half inch difference, so I can change the uh, depth by half inch increments. And the uh, wheels, are spare tires off a GM 
and so are the hubs. They're like a trailing, the trailing axle off of a, like a uh, Impala full-size General Motors car. Picked up the snowblower used, and so it did need a little bit of work, but uh, straightened out the augers, took the fan out, and built that up a little bit and stuff. So on this side, you can notice I lengthened back the bracket because initially, originally the augers ran out of the output of the gearbox, which was located down in the guts there. So on the right hand of the Gleaner Combine, excuse me, left hand, left hand they have the electric clutch for the header and that's what I'm utilizing here to actually uh, run the auger. So this now is auger. So left hand electric clutch runs augers, right hand clutch runs fan only. And here I utilized, I was lucky enough on the right hand side to get a belt that was the correct length and it's for the time being anyway is adequately tight enough that I'm confident it will not slip. On the uh, left side you notice I have a tight spring loader tightener which I utilized um, off of the combine. This was the original pivot area for the header and now it's the pivot area uh, built out of square tubing and here I added a uh, three point quick catch hitch standard for a tractor and then the snowblower of, of course um, hooks into that. Do a shot from the back here. So I did everything that is combine related has been 100% removed from the unit and I dropped the engine down 36 inches and I dropped the uh, cab down 14 inches simply because it just didn't need to be that high and it's easier to get in and out of the buildings and stuff so I also narrowed up because this is a pretty wide machine and you probably notice that my tire width now is wider than the blower but I and I'm getting into the process of picking up different tires. I need to narrow up about, you can probably see about eight to 10 inches per side. And I have to, I've located some narrower rims and tires just at this point to have not gotten to that point of the build yet, so. I did narrow up the rear axle substantially. You can see where I spliced it there so that the, the rear tread is going to be narrower. <clears throat> and when I did that, it caused an interference with the tire and the uh, hydraulic oil reservoir. So I did lengthen this out a little bit right here to give sufficient clearance to the rear wheels. Come around on this side of the machine. Um, on the air cleaner assembly and the radiator, I removed the rotating fan assembly, which is designed to keep dirt and debris out of the radiator. And I designed this unit, which is, um, I think, 18 gauge galvanized uh, sheet metal, drew it up, and had a local company cut it out on their laser. And I have an adjustment here so I can restrict because I want this engine to run warm so it's normal operating temperature and I have no idea um, if it will do that under load so down here we have the hydraulic pump and this is all this entire assembly here just dropped down with the engine when I dropped the engine down um, 36 inches
Okay, up on top of the unit, so I just came up the steps and I have a, a narrow catwalk here that I can gain access. Uh, this is my upgraded fuel cell. I have a toolbox there that I utilized. And as you can see, there is nothing inside of here. You can actually see down to the floor because everything has been removed. Bring you inside the cab area. So in the cab, uh, this is your up and down header control, which uh, raises the blower up and down. And then this is a hydrostatic drive unit, so forwards going to go incrementally faster, and then you can pull it back. You have reverse. And I also picked up a four-way electrical switch for like off of a truck mounted uh, snow blade and so that will do rotate spout rotate spout and also um, deflector so all of my controls for the operation of the blower I can run with one hand uh, up down control speed and rotate and tilt spout and these are the two electrical switches uh, this one's going to turn on the auger. This one here turns on fan. And this is the view from the cab. Uh, looking down on the blower, so should have good visibility. And we're out moving snow. Since this is a hydrostatic drive, it's quite simple. I have a main drive belt coming off the output of the, of the engine here. And I don't know how well you can see this, but it goes down to the hydrostat underneath this protective screen. And the other drive belt goes across to what we would call the main shaft. And that is, shaft is live whenever the engine is running. And that's where the electric clutch for the left and the right hand side of the, the machine is located. Just a shot up here of the engine bay. So yeah, pretty straightforward. The engine just runs the hydrostatic and it runs the cross shaft and everything hooks onto that. And there is, initially I was going to use the existing hydraulics that were with the combine, but we're looking at something that was getting close to 40 years old. And so on the advice of a friend, who is also a specialist in hydraulics, he recommended purchasing a new valve assembly, which I did. So that is this unit right here. So all of the, this is a three, uh, three valve electric over hydraulic and so I put all new hoses and so everything goes through here and it goes to wherever it needs to go on the combine and there's a picture of the hydrostatic drive unit so we're sitting right in the guts which is what used to be the thrashing part of the machine
thanks for watching. Uh, in conclusion, uh, the project worked really well. You notice in that video that I did get the narrower tires put on. I love the heated cab. Um, it's like 70, 80 degrees in there, so it works really nice. I like looking forward. No more sore neck and cramped up shoulders from a rear mounted tractor snowblower. I love the rotating spout and a deflector. I've never had that before in a snowblower. It's really nice to uh, direct the snow where you want it to go. The visibility is awesome. So yeah, the, the project worked out really good. I'd like to thank my son-in-law Ivan for videotaping on Christmas Day. And it sounds like we have another big storm coming up in a couple of days. So I'll probably be able to try it out some more. Catch you later.